Where life is full of suffering, its causes are desire. Nirvana is the end of it, extinguishing the fire. To reach the end of suffering, we walk the Eightfold Path. Right view is the first step, meditation is the last. Namaste. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been following this series and giving such positive energy in response. Uh, I had held off talking about this stuff for a long time because I was uncertain that there's an audience, you know? And so I stuck to the safe uh, topics of different philosophies and meditations and stuff and didn't get too much into my personal bag. <laughs> but now the magic is working and due to the positive energy generated by these videos and your response, now several people have got in contact with me with very similar ideas who want to do something. And so I'm very, very happy about that. And we're going to continue along this same line. In this video, I'm going to describe how my taste evolved. So as we've been talking about, my taste is has to do with strong sensations. And how did that happen? Well, I could tell you the whole clinical background of my prenatal uh, experience in my mother's womb uh, and the, uh, well, they were physically traumatic experiences with emotional and semantic content that led to my taste. Okay, that's probably a little technical for most folks. <laughs> but what it means is that due to my karma, this body was patterned and a taste was installed in it while still in the womb. And actually this is the case with most of us. We inherit our parents' tastes to a great degree due to prenatal programming. And in my case, the way it came out, not to get into all the complications and details of it here, the way it came out is that I had a preference, a um, pre-existing taste for strong sensations. So, okay, fast forward to uh, age 12. I had seen a movie on TV about Indian yogis and fakirs using a bed of nails. You know, sitting, lying, doing all sorts of things on the bed of nails. And here are these skimpily dressed, dressed guys doing all this stuff on a bed of nails, which as you can imagine, would generate a very strong sensation, right? <laughs> so even as a young boy, because I had this vasana, whether from previous life karma or from my womb experience, I had this karma that predisposed me to that kind of experience. So as soon as I saw this film, I was like, hmm, that looks really interesting. <laughs> and I saw other similar films, but that was the one that really stuck. So my taste for India and my taste for strong sensations and extreme practices kind of began together. Right? They grew together out of my predisposition for strong uh, sensations. So I built one. I built a small bed of nails and I started playing with it. And that led pretty much directly to my first sexual experience in this body. And so I was very strongly patterned by that experience. 
very strongly imprinted by those, those prior impressions. Mm -hmm. So that now the, the two sensations huh, of strong stimulation to the skin and sexual arousal are fully associated. So when I met my wife, I told this story, I think, a few videos ago. When I met my first wife, she took me to the Navajo Reservation. And I was going through the Kadoshka warrior training. I was like 22, 23 years old. And uh, so part of the training is that you have to go out into the wilderness with a senior brother, a senior brave, right? To be initiated into the mysteries. That's the, the phrase, initiated into the warrior mysteries, right? The brotherhood. So we went out, took a couple of horses and very little food. And went out to a spring way out in the desert in the middle of nowhere, right? downtown nowhere. I'm telling you, there was not, nothing but animal trails. It was really out there. And basically this guy, this brave, uh, well, there's no, there's no way to say it nicely. <laughs> Kept me tied to a tree for three days. Okay, 24 or 7. Or 24 3. <laughs> and you see, the idea in the, in the warrior training is that you might get captured. Right? And in general, warriors have to put up with a lot of physical pain. Right? And, and really what determines who wins a fight is who can stand the most pain. Okay? This is a well-known thing among martial artists. Whoever can take the most is usually the one left standing. So the warrior training, both in the uh, Native Americans and the Chinese, consists in toughening the body and strengthening the resistance or the tolerance to these strong sensations that you're liable to run into during combat, right? Or if you get captured during interrogation. So a part of the thing was a simulated interrogation because the most valuable thing a warrior possesses is his knowledge. The information is the most valuable thing to the other side. If they can get that information, then they have an advantage. So if one is captured, there's always going to be interrogation and then there's going to be punishment. So how to survive that, how to deal with that extreme situation is part of any serious warrior training. It's part of spe uh, special forces training in the United States. I know I've talked to these guys. Um, they go through a kind of uh, like simulated internment camp, you know, uh, secret, secret camps, you know, with uh, torture chambers and the whole bit. You know, very well-trained staff. And, uh, though that's, that's out of our scope. Because <laughs> we're, we're trying to deal with how the techniques of Tantra evolved in traditional societies. How is it? Because modern culture has a um, very strong cultural prohibition against intense sensations in a social context. Isn't it? You know, if you drop something on your foot and go, ah, ow, you know, <laughs> in the middle of a room full of people, everyone's going to turn and look. They're interrupted by it, right? It's a thing. It so rarely happens. Well, 
it rarely happens because it's been programmed out of our society, right? If you want that kind of experience or even that kind of content, you have to tune in to special channels, uh, like sports. In sports, you see people extending their bodies to the limits and beyond. <laughs> in uh, some kinds of fashion competitions, uh, or weightlifting or, or yoga competitions, where people really, really extend their bodies way beyond you know, the norm. And they're trained to take those sensations. And then there's, you know, uh, bondage porn and stuff like this, which, which I really look down on, okay? Uh, most sensitive people don't like it. And, and I'll tell you why they don't like it, why I don't like it. It's because it doesn't show loving relationships. Any kind of porn is driven by the clock, by money, and by necessity. Okay, those people are not there for love. <laughs> and they're not spiritually developed or enough, <clears throat> in most cases, to even really experience that or portray that. It's just all about, you know, the body and the bed and all of that. I don't like that. I think it, uh, it gives a very bad example. Back in the 70s, late 60s and 70s, there was a movement in California called Loving Porn. Uh, and even in the SM community, Loving SM was a meme, was a thing. It didn't survive. And the reason it didn't survive was it didn't make good porn. <laughs> it was too tame. People wanted more and more extreme, specialized stuff. So, as usual in the marketplace, the nice guys lost. And the uh, people who were focused totally on profit overwhelmingly won. Okay. And this happens in every field, right? But the result has been that because the only sex education, the only real sex education is porn these days, isn't it? Huh? No, no dad is going to sit down, or maybe very rare dad is going to sit down with his son and explain things. Usually because the dads feel themselves incompetent, too. They feel themselves uh, unsatisfied. They don't even know what is their core taste, let alone actually pursue it. Well. I knew right from the beginning what my core taste was, and so I did pursue it, and I found it in Native American society, in Chinese warriors' uh, traditions, the iron shirt, qigong, the, uh, well, other things that are <laughs> not supposed to be spoken of publicly. But in every warrior, every extreme lifestyle tradition, the, the navigators of the Micronesian islands, uh, these guys would go out for a week on an outrigger canoe, my God, you know. So they have this training to prepare them for these extreme experiences, and it always involves sex. Why? Because sex is a natural need of the body. And if you're involved in activities, especially passionate activities, it's going to come up. Okay, and so you have to be equipped to handle it in the kind of environment, in the kind of situation in which it's going to come up. That's the philosophy behind the warrior trainings that involve sex. Incidentally, they also provide spiritual results <laughs> or predispose one to acquire spiritual uh, merits. Why? <clears throat> you try sitting in any proper meditation posture for 30 minutes. Huh? Lotus, half lotus, or even easy posture. Your legs are going to fall asleep. Your legs are going to hurt. 
you know, your lower back, huh? if you're not used to it, if you're not in shape, if you don't have what we call a good seat, your lower back is going to be stiff and, and sore and so on, your hips. So this pain is either a obstacle or an opportunity, depending on how you look at it. You see, and actually everything is like that. Everything can be an obstacle. Everything can be an opportunity. But pain, physical pain, is a particular button that most of us are not well trained or equipped to deal with, to handle. And so the interesting thing in the tantric side is what happens when you associate uh, intense sensations. I really don't like the word pain because it's a judgment. Huh? It's like pain will happen in life, but suffering is a judgment. Huh? But then when we look at pain, sensation will happen in life. But pain is a judgment. Pain is when we start to think, oh, this is going to damage my body. Isn't it? That's how we subjectively discern pain, as opposed to strong sensation. But what if we suspend that judgment? What if we make everything neutral? What if we just are prepared to tolerate it and see where it leads? Then we find some very interesting things. That the use of strong sensations in a sexual context enables us to have, I'll say it, more and better orgasms than anything else. At least that's my experience, okay? Now, if you have all kinds of negative judgments about pain, then, you know, you probably wouldn't have that experience. <laughs> You'd probably be resisting. And resisting so much that you trap yourself in a lower performance um, of sexuality. Uh, you can't reach those class five, class six uh, orgasms. Why? Because you're not using the right foreplay. You're not raising your body's energies high enough. And that is done through intense sensations. Now, some people do it by going out drinking and dancing. Some people do it by sports, extreme sports. Huh? I don't know. There's all kinds of ways to experience strong bodily sensations as a prelude to sex. But to experience them during sex... <laughs> is what most people would consider kinky. And people have a judgment about that. So, you know, it's like nice girls aren't kinky. Nice girls don't do kink, right? Or nice guys. But I'm here to tell you that anybody who really wants to experience the most mind-chattering uh, orgasms uh, that take you in, to an energy level beyond anything you've ever experienced, you have to use extreme sensations, intense sensations, along with whatever kind of sexual stimulation you have going on. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, I could tell you all kinds of stories now, huh? This happened and that happened and blah, 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 blah. But I think I've talked enough stories for today uh, about my early life and upbringing and how it basically set me up to be the kind of person I am today and why people might be judgmental toward me because they don't understand that. And I hope we've moved a little bit further towards a real understanding of that. Um, so I can be free to be who I really am. And so can you. Om Tat Sat. Buddha Sarana.